joining us today. I'm very thrilled to be able to be here and uh, join Millie. And Millie is uh, the Chief Executive Com Chief Compliance Officer for WeLab Bank. And she's going to be here to share her insights with us on digital transformation. How many of you here, just before we start, how many of you here have used virtual or dig fully digital banks? Good. <laughs> Excellent. All right, I have, I have used a virtual bank for about uh, six years. And we have traditional bank and, and, and virtual banks. So um, the thing about digital transformation is when we hear those words, we all have a different idea of what digital transformation is. Some people would think it's just going from fax to email or from paper to digital. And some people are thinking smart cities and beyond. It can mean so many different things. So Millie, today, would you be able to share with us from Relapse Bank uh, uh, perspective, what does digital transformation mean? Yes, digital transformation can mean a lot of things, can mean very different things to many different people. But for us, um, digital transformation is the process of us using digital technology to change our, our way to operate our business and to deliver values to our customer. It is the way how we do business um, by the deployments of technology. Uh, there, I, I would say uh, that many, many, many people think I, they use a, a website or an apps and they are doing digital transformations. For me, I think the key defining elements of digital transformation is how do you create values by using technologies to your business and your customer. That are they find uh, there are many ways of, of using uh, digital transformations uh, to create values. It can either be the use of uh, digital technologies to automate your business uh, process and, um, uh, and improve efficiency and reducing costs. It can also be the use of technology to collect and, and analyze data uh, to, to gain insight and then make better decisions for your business and to facilitate your customer to make decisions. Uh, it can be to create new products and new market and, and, and compete more effectively uh, in different product markets. Lastly, I think it can be also the transformations of customer experience uh, in the way they consume uh, your, your products and the way they interact and proceed with that brand. It is the way how, how I see our digital transformation manifest in, in the way. Uh, but the key things to define the elements again is don't be digitized just because you want to be digitized. It must create values that it does as a defining element, I think. Great. Thank you so much, Mim. Uh, let's, let's dive deeper into the benefits and uh, some of the uh, challenges that anyone who's thinking about going uh, to the, through the digital uh, journey, transformation journey, would face. So from your perspective, what are some of the benefits that someone who's considering uh, digital transformation can hope for or look forward to? Before we, we deep dive into the benefit or challenges, maybe uh, I talk about a little bit about the um, benefit and challenges that we see as, as a digital native companies in our conference as we lab. Uh, we lab group has been uh, it, it is now the 10 years anniversary of the Relab Group. We, we start up as an uh, online lending platform and then we transform into nowadays one of the leading financial providers uh, uh, of financial services in Hong Kong. For, for us, uh, digital transformation is not just an adoption of one technology into one process and then or, 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 um, or transformation of your apps. It is an ongoing process. It is not a one-off things. Uh, and it is a wandering process for us to innovate and, 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 and get change. It requires to be uh, agile and adaptable. Um, I think it is also one of the key elements which set it apart from the other traditional uh, financial service provider. In fact, we, we have uh, been uh, reward, uh, recognized by CHA to be the most creative organization in Hong Kong. 
uh, in 2012. Uh, in that context, in that competition, our, com our, our competitor uh, uh, include HSBC and Hanson Bank as well. <laughs> so it is a very, very big honor to us um, to be in that competition. So, so going back to the digital transformations of us, uh, we, we manifest in the way you see in three years ago in, in 2020, we set up a fully digital platform for, for Hong Kong. We, we have, uh, we will set, we will establish a uh, Wheeler Bank. It is one, one of people through, through, the, through our apps. You can, you can open account, you can make payments, you can even invest or manage your wealth at any time, anywhere, by anyone. It is, it is, uh, I, 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 as you, as you, most of you uh, raise your hand that you have a virtual banking experience, we will know. It is much easier. Uh, than the way we operate banking three years ago. Now you can do anything just by opening an account just less than in less than five minutes. So so it, it is the way we, we do we build our digital fast uh, platform. And then of things we, we transform ourselves is the mindset. Uh, I remember ten years ago. Uh, when I was still working with a conventional bank, I talked to my CEO and said, "Wow, we have a lot of the, um, uh, data. Can we make use of big data to design a, to design a product for, for our customer?" And then the CEOs asked me, "How?" Ten years ago, I was still mm, uh, working in, in legal departments or legal advisor for, for acquisition and merger. I, I have no answer to these questions. But 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 now, uh, um, after I joined uh, the bank, the virtual bank, uh, this one of the slogans I embrace a lot is uh, "Data is our friend." By digital transformation, one of the most powerful tools is the data and data analytic capabilities of the technology. You can. Do an analysis. You can collect data from uh, from your customer and analyze it to understand not only their preferences are in product. You can know their credit score. You can know their AMR score. You can do pricing instantly. That is the beauty of big data and AI solution. Uh, I think uh, it is one of the transformations which have uh, we, which we have gone through in the in the, in the past few years uh, and. Yeah. Uh, uh, it is one of the capabilities, um, and and thirdly about transformation is we are, and, and 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 the lesson that we learned is you cannot do it alone. You have to do it together with talent and expert. Uh, in this way, we have uh, been partnership with uh, various uh, different organizations and big brand. Our partners including Apple, Tesla, and Astra. We have been partnership with Apple. Uh, in, if you go to Fortress to buy iPhone, you can get thirty percent off from your price. It is a is a one of our lending our, our winning lending program. Uh, if you if you if you want a Tesla car, uh, WinLab is now the the, the one uh, the, the number one uh, um, lender for for Tesla loan. You can get it uh, in. I think almost instantly uh, we want to get a car. Uh, we have been partnership with Astra, one of the, the biggest uh, listed company in Indonesia to acquire Bank of Jakarta just last year. Uh, our plan is to transform Bank of Jakarta into a digital bank and to and to expand our market in, in Indonesia in the coming years. So so that is um that is how we transform ourselves by partner partner things with um, partnership with different um, Different brand. I think today we're going to have like a spike in Tesla and, and iPhone sales. <laughs> you have to try. It is a, it's a very, very good product. I, I want to get a Tesla from my, com my company, but there come once people say I can't because I'm, I'm one of the senior managers, so, so I can't get it. So if you can, please. I think, <laughs> I think Millie needs to find someone to coach her on negotiation. What do you think? <laughs> Yes, you, you're the you're expert here. Uh, I think lastly about our transformation is, it, as I said, it's not a one of things. You have to keep uh, innovating and keep creating. So no matter it is uh, EKYC, 
digital London platform and wealth management platform, we have been cap investing in innovations. Um, we, one of the areas which we have been exploring is um, I've come up with a uh, is the use of unsupervised uh, learning, um, like a kind of machine learning, to do fraud and AML uh, risk management uh, detections. It's totally digital, no no manual transport. So so that that is another area which we are investigating as well. I've been lined up with different uh, enforcement agencies and also our regulators are uh, in. Uh, in, in the experiment, we, we want to have their uh, supervised learning algorithm uh, to help Hong Kong to uh, um, not, not only for buys but also for the authority and agency to solve most of the pain points. So it's, it, is, uh, it is the way how we work and we keep in innovating and keep uh, investing uh, in our technologies. So it is, I just think they, these are all the examples how we truly embrace technologies, data analytics, uh, and embed it in our business to acquire customers. So coming back to your point about benefit, we virtual bank is a bank. So when you come to when, when banks come to your mind, it will be have a lot of people working at the back end, you have AML people uh, sitting in many mainland China, Malaysia, and Shanghai to help you to do the detections. In Villa Bank, we have only 200 people. Half of them are IT people. So we less than 100 people doing the things that I just mentioned. So without innovative and creative technology, we can do it. So effectively and accurately. So, so you, you, it is the, it's how, how it's the benefit and it increase with digital transformation, it increases the efficiency and effectiveness of your, of your, of your process. By, we, we don't have, well, a lot of time when, when, you, when you talk about graph management or lending, maybe the, the, the first thing comes to your mind is a lot of RM at the front. In virtual bank, we don't have our end. You and the apps, there no one in between, no selling. So, so it is it is how we we create values to our customer. Just by using the apps, they can they can acquire and consume our product anytime, anywhere. So, so that is the way we create our values to our customer. It is the way we acquire. By, by, by analyzing the data uh, we, we, we get from, from, from the customer consumption, we get the big data from the customer on the know how to design, what are the pain points of the customer, we design our products a lot this way. So again, it creates values to the company, say cost, we create values to the customer by providing more convenience and effective um, and, and user-friendly products for them. So, and also for for, for general public, it is the way we facilitate the development of technology in Hong Kong. Um, so, so, so that is that is how I see the benefit. Of course, there would also be challenges uh, when you are not doing digital transformation. Three main key challenges: cost is the money. Secondly, people. And, and third is the mindset. We always, when, when you talk to your boss or, or your investor or shareholders in investing into something, one thing they will ask is how much money it can be generated from that initiative, how much cost it will get. So it, for, for FinTech, it's very, very difficult. People always say it's very difficult to, 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 to evaluate as to how, how much values it can, it can regenerate. But that's a whole thing I can share with you if you, if you like. So, so that's cost things. Another thing is people. You always um, uh, hear people saying that I don't have that kind of expert or talent in my company to do digital transformations and acquiring or getting people inside the company or have us do conflict. So people. And then thirdly is uh, about culture. 
So we can see that from the demonstration in the UK when we when company uh, start to using AI, that people go or go on the street and, and demonstrate an object in the use of AI. Same things in the company when we say introduce digital uh, things into the company, they will say, oh, they were afraid they would lose their job in, in the process. That people have a tendency to to reject changes and reject technology. So so that is the three key things uh, which are the obstacle uh, of digital transformation. Thank you very much. So Billy, with, with the, you've shared uh, the benefits and some of the challenges, and you talked about uh, the finance, the money part of it, the people and the mindset and the culture, right? So from, in terms of that, if someone is considering going through the digital transformation, what are some things that they need to consider on how to navigate those obstacles that you're talking about, the culture? Can you maybe elaborate a little bit about how someone could navigate a mindset change? Uh, I think that they're talking about the first challenge is the cost, cost of implementations. I think the first thing first is set your goal and objective clear as to what do you want to achieve through digitization. Not because other people are doing digitization, so so am I, it's, it's not the things. You have to be very clear as to what you want to achieve, and then your plan and budgets will, will get there. You, you, you will be able to articulate clearly to your investors, your shareholders, as to what benefit and what values you can generate from that. I have seen a lot of uh, companies are coming coming to us and, and say they would like to digitize, but they don't know what exactly, what pain point they, they, they want to, to address. So, so that is the first thing. Uh, and the second thing is, of course, uh, you have to partner with a trusted advisor. There are many companies like we lab, <laughs> so they can they are specialized in helping business with digitizations. So we, we, we partner with, with, with those our advisors who can help you to avoid costs and mistake uh, and, and to ensure that your project is successful. So so that is uh, I, I think the way uh, to, to overcome the first point. As I said, evaluating a fintech that is a formula. It is a way to, to, to show to your investor or shareholder as to how much money, how much profit, how much value that that can bring to your organizations. So 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 that that is um, um, one thing. Another thing is lacking of internal skill and, and expertise. If you don't know something, learn. Yeah. So just upskill our, our skill set. Um, I came from a legal background uh, after I joined a virtual bank. I, I'm a, I also push myself uh, and my team as well to attend uh, FinTech classes. I'm attending a doctorate degree uh, on FinTech uh, with the University of Hong Kong. Uh, at the time I was speaking, my, the, the CEO of WeLab Bank uh, has been flying to the University of Stanford um, to, to attend another FinTech course. All of my uh, colleagues are in SEC, the financial crime uh, compliance. They uh, attend a high form course. So, so that is the way we, we, we change the culture. We encourage people to keep transforming themselves as well. So if you don't know, you learn it and you get it. So, so that, is, that is the upskill. Uh, Process. Of course, you say you cannot learn uh, things overnight. Of course, you can't. So, so that is also important to to partnership with a technology company. Uh, um, there are also a lot of companies, uh, with, um, technology companies like 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 we Lab, which can provide the right talent and solutions for you uh, without your people to know uh, the coding. So, so that that is the, that is the way we we overcome the talent. Uh, uh, issues. I think that the third thing is, uh, is, is, is culture. Um, how, how to overcome the internal resistance to new things. I think communication is key. We have a lot of time. Ta I don't know your company, but um, the companies, the banks are used to, to work for, in town hall, they just talk about numbers. In in we like in town hall we talk about how to embrace change. <laughs> it, 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 no, no, of course we also talk about number, but we also uh, talk about how we 
progress, how we change. So the communication and commitment um, to be able to embrace changes and transformations is one of the key things to track the cultural transformation. We, we have a we have a lot of workshop just on those. Uh, just like last week, we have a Python uh, launching for, for our staff just to learn Python. I don't know how they learned it um, just by having a lunch together, <laughs> but that is the way we deliver um, our community. And, and the second thing is I think we have to engage our people in the process. Uh, just like a lot of people ask me when, 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 when ChatGPT came out. So that I think the first thing is how do you, how we as a business can make use of ChatGPT or similar challenges to help our business to do things in more, uh, in a much less cost effective uh, costly way. So um, uh, we, we ask each of the team, including legal, including FCC, including HR, to tell us and come up with a proposal as to how can they do use AI to um, transform that process. So believe me, oh no, uh, they are able to come up with a lot of um, interesting and exciting ideas and we are going to implement those. So, so it is the way we, we engage people because they are the one who decide they have they have been engaged, they are the one who, who designed um, um, how to deploy the technologies. You can see very less, uh, very, very, very minimal resistance of the use of AI in our company. So, so, so that is uh, how I see we can mitigate and, and, and navigate through the challenges by, by using um, this um, ways. So what I hear is that there's a, <clears throat> there's a need for a commitment to continuous improvement and learning. Yes. Right? Yes. Um, <clears throat> so the next question is, uh, I was thinking, look, some, some of you are here because you're interested about uh, the topic of digital transformation. So it's a journey. Right? But what I understand about WeLab is you guys are digital natives, meaning the, the moment they start, they're already digital, okay? So the question is, since you started digital, what I'm sure you guys experienced a lot of learning moments. Are there anything, looking back, that WeLab would do differently? We're going deep inside we lab. <laughs> really deep. Uh, I think one thing uh, which we may... But only if you're comfortable sharing. Yes. <laughs> if you, yes. Exceptional. Um, if not about uh, the pandemic, I think we should have expand more aggressively uh, in more different uh, new market and in terms of geographicals and also current suite, I think we, we should have uh, done more, uh, more, more, more aggressively. So, so that that is the that is the reflection. We have to be more confident in ourselves. Uh, but anyway, uh, we we have been expediting our our uh, process in expanding into into different uh, market. Uh, as I just mentioned, uh, we have been partnered with Extra and 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 there are plans to transform the cartels into a digital. Uh, uh, bank uh, in, in the coming years, and also we are expanding our. Our China, China's uh, franchise. Uh, we are not only doing uh, lending; we are doing wealth management as well. So, so there are also different plans uh, for, for of of labs to expand our product suite as well. So, so that that is the things uh, which we are doing. But if you ask me, yes, we have to be more aggressively in expanding our work. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so, Melly, before we wrap up. Let's, uh, I would like to see whether you're able to share with the companies here who are fin in the fintech industry and considering digital transformation. What are some top tips that you have for them? Those I, I want to say three, but let's ask for 50. <laughs> <laughs> What's that many? <laughs> so, um, it, it, I, 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 there are a lot of experts here as well. I, I, I think so just to share um, some of the tips, which we have learned in a hard way. I think uh, the first thing I learned, uh, we, we learned from the process is we have to start small. Don't do too many things, do too much too soon. You, you, you should 
when we are doing the digital transformation, we, 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 we should start from something small. Learn and grow by the way, and then you can do better, more and better, but not in the beginning. So, so, so that must be a plan. Um, we have to do it. And, 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 another, and another thing is, uh, the second thing is patience. You have to tell yourself to be patient. You have to tell your investor and shareholder to be patient as well. Digital transformations cannot be changed overnight, apparently. So it is a journey, and during the journey, there will be a lot of disruption to your process, to your system, to your people as well. There will be a lot of people who leave organizations uh, because of culture or learning. So, so that would be a lot of disruption. So you have to be comfortable with the uncomfortables before you can actually arrive. So, so that is the second tips that how we learned. Don't be afraid or be impatient about, about changes. So I think that is the there are, there are two key things. I think the last thing is about uh, yes, keep learning. Yes, there are so many, so many things that which we don't know. So keep learning and expanding network. There are a lot of uh, challenge in Hong Kong who can help us, who can which we can leverage on uh, to do our business. So so just expand, uh, open our eyes, expand, and then we can we, we, we can all work together. Thank you, Millie. As you can see, she's been very generous with her time and her experience and knowledge. So let's all give Millie a hand of applause. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, now I'd like to open it to the floor and see if there's any questions you guys have for Millie. If you don't, I have 50. <laughs> Thanks, thanks really for sharing all your wisdom and knowledge. I was just curious when you said we do a lot of back-end research with data and pain points. Can you just give us some example of the pain points you can find from data at your end on a bank perspective? You mean pain points in collecting data? No, the pain points you find which you improve improve our data analytic capabilities. Improve your offerings. Our, our offering, I think one of the pain points is the lacking of a central a golden. Okay, one of the key things for, for buying and especially new business is the way how we design or design our offering. How to make our apps, our, our offering, our delivery suitable or uh, for, for our customer, attractive to our customer. And you need a lot of data for virtual bank, especially new virtual bank. We, we Hong Kong has only had virtual bank since three years ago. We are we are baby in terms of our internet. And and the lacking of a golden data source is one of the key pain points for us because if you don't have enough data, don't talk about big data. If you have, don't have enough or accurate of your customer, you can't really do your data and data correctly. So, so that is one of the key pain points for us. Even, even though we have the big data and, and, and analysis or, or, or capability, we, do, we just don't have the data. So, but thanks uh, for, for, for the Hong Kong government, for the open API uh, regime. Now, we comes to a new era. Um, we once we, we, we all the banks now in Hong Kong uh, have set up an open API the information exchange uh, framework. So with the customer consent now, I can get, for example, Alan, with your consent, I can get all your banking. You do not have my consent. <laughs> <laughs> Let me try the negotiation skill first. Uh, so, so with your consent, I can get access to your information with all the other banks, or plotted sources, MPF, company registry, land registry, uh, and also if you can give me also your, your credit card statement, I can also help you uh, with technologies to come you just sneak my credit card information <laughs> in there? And then I will help you to come up 
a confidential just for you report to analyze how your financial overall financial position is not only the asset but also the liability how you spend your money how you can and provide you the insight as to how you can better manage your wealth so that is a, 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 a an offering used to be offered to only private bank but with technology nowadays you just let me have have the consent to check box i can help you to do this so what i'm hearing is you you can have access to a lot of information and then build a very holistic picture about my situation so that you guys can provide advice is yes that, exactly i yes. can do that yes <laughs> and, and also if you also with your consent we can make use of those data um, to design and personalize our financial service for you so so that that is the way i i think that of course we, we we're not yet there yeah uh it is a journey but with the technologies now we can solve those pain points which we have encountered before now we have a much bigger uh and an easier way um uh, opportunities to to deep dive into into those data and now the big data analytics is uh capabilities is much more mature than before um so not only i can do it in bedroom for you but i can we can also make use of those technologies to do analysis for the whole segment so i can i can know okay who what are the people similar to you and what are the commercial terms i can offer to those uh, customers it's not only for me or, or for us as a virtual bank it this kind of data analytics and report capability can also be adopted by your business as well you can imagine if you can get those report or get those analysis and and provide insight to your customer how much commercial opportunity you can acquire um, in, in, in the in process so so it's uh, and and i think it's a shame that kind of technology has been out there for a long time but no one uh, really make make the full use of it that's very powerful and in in business consulting uh, there's something that we call uh, competitive intelligence how many of you are familiar with that compet you can you can look at your my clients and then can look at my clients competitors we will find out where they're getting their imports from how much they import we can work backwards and see where where their profitability is we know what's so there's a lot of information once you have data it sounds like this is almost like a competitive intelligence but on a personal level it's pretty powerful okay i have some questions do you have any questions if not i'm going to fire away and be selfish go ahead Yeah, hi. Like you mentioned this thing about whenever you're going into something new to start small. Uh now that's a big challenge because when there's an opportunity, you want to do it fast, you want to scale up fast. It's for example, like if you look at Google, they sat back and they were not releasing their AI version, chat GPT, leave them to it and look what's happened. So how do you balance this between starting small and especially to be the first to be out there? Again, I think we. I forgot to mention um, just now. I think another tips or or or, or learning I have acquired uh, during the journey is we we just have to be realistic in terms of money, in terms of time, in terms of deliveries. So so just take your example from AI. So there are a lot of AI technology. You you. You do not know how much before you. You actually know how much values you can obtain from those uh, 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 deploy those technology into your process. You will not do it. Maybe you will just pilot AI solution in one of the key uh, processes you do, and then you start from there and see whether the technology actually work in the way we want them to, and then you see the result, and then you 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 do you you track the progress, and then you. Um, acquire the learning and replicate it in different uh, process in your company. I think there 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 planning and there 
That, that is the way uh, I see it. You, you can't actually balance because you don't know. I think before we dive into something you don't know or, or there are so talent is something just like Gary. He, he, he would not know his computer would hang, right? There are so, so, so many uncertainty in, in the technology world, especially in the AI era. Uh, I think we, we are still uh, in course of learning. Just pilot something small, but before we do anything with it, we have to fully understand the values which we can, how much we can monitor by it, keep monitoring the figures, and then only when we see the result, we deploy it into a bigger um, um, areas uh, of, our, of our business. I think it may be, and, and you talk about speed, we're not talking about years. It's just pilot maybe okay we we, we can do, we can plans to do a lot uh, deploy AI in, in, in ten different areas, but you just pilot one and see the result first. Once you are happy with your result, then you can replicate it and do the rest of uh, uh, process. So so that is um uh, uh, we are talking about when, when, when people say okay how uh, how do you, what is the lead time or timelines for us to deploy uh, the AI in our in our process? We're talking about three months. Yes. yes. But we would not do it at once for all the process. Thank you. I have a question for you, Melly. It's like I was wanting to ask that for a long time. Uh, well, you guys think about yours. Uh, earlier you talked about uh, user experience. I want to know, as one of the users of like virtual banking, what are some of the most popular areas uh, for, for the end user that you guys have found to be valuable? There's so many. <laughs> Pick the biggest one. I think the bigger, biggest one, if you, you think about three years ago before the pandemic, if you look at the newspaper, most of the complaints are about a kind of thing. Small companies, especially, they have a lot of challenges to open an account with banks. Okay, so it takes it can, it can it can it takes months, sometimes a year, to just open an account. Especially if your company is um, uh, in corporate offices or offshore countries. So it's very I can I can attest to that. I have a client in Las Vegas in the gaming business. <laughs> they tried to open a bank account. It took longer than six months. And the whole in Hong Kong, but they were in Vegas. And I was like, it's, that, that sounds crazy. I don't think it takes six months to open a bank account. But apparently it's common. I don't want to branch out uh, too, too, far, too, too far away, but I don't really want to talk about this point. It's because e even with the big, very big uh, banks or financial institutions, when it comes to open uh, account opening, although the front end, the UI UX, is automated, is digital, but the back end, they are still supported by a lot of people. There's a whole process, a menu. So, so it takes, I don't know how much use and hoops your, your customer have to go through before they can actually get everyone in the line uh, to agree that that's something that they are uh, onboarding. But with um, uh, virtual buying, all this uh, the device, we, we, we have the system and algorithms to assess whether this is someone that we can onboard. So 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 I think that that is a, that is the key area. I think um, uh, people find it uh, useful. And another thing is about uh, fraud monitoring. Before three years ago, if you if you use your credit card or card to to purchase something online. You will receive an the so-called alert system. Yes, you will receive an SMS, and then you will press one to confirm or two to decline. That's all. That but now with 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 with, um, with apps, what they ask you to do is just to take a selfie, blink your eyes, then you can go through some of the highest transactions. It's much easier and safer, and provide a customer with more security. Um, to, to, to use the platforms to do transactions. I think that, that is another way um, we will change. Um, not talking about a company, but like the insurance um, issue pack. It's another area which I overhauled um, um, uh, in the past uh, 12 months of the industry. Uh, before, for, for issue pack, if you need to file a claim uh, with the insurance company, it takes days. But now, you just need to take, to take a picture 
and then it will process automatically. Um, it takes two days that the money is in your account. So, so that is the way um, customer experience and, and, and values most. For us, the wealth management, I've just talked about, I'll talk about the wealth management functions of our, of our bank. Before, if you need to open an investment account, you have to do suitability assessment, you have to listen to your RM for hours, uh, you have to, 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 to read a lot of papers, get a lot of papers, and then you have to go through weeks um, to just place an order. But now with uh, FinTech, with wealth management, with the robo advisory functionality, you can do it. You can place, you can open an account in less than five minutes. You can place an order of a single phone in less than two minutes. And you still have all the, all the if, if, but you still have, uh, uh, but we are still compliant with all the necessary uh, regulatory requirements and provide you with all the uh, information you need. And in the process, there's no selling. So, so that, that is the way I think is totally change the, uh, the, the customer experience in terms of wealth management uh, process. So when you say you can open a bank account within minutes and do so many things so quickly, my mind is trying to go, how do you balance speed and convenience with security? Like at home, my place, my, at my place we have a computer dedicated to just only handling uh, banks. No emails go there, there's no communication, no games, no, and it's go through a VPN in my house, and that's, the, that's just for me doing personal banking. Right. So how 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 well, how do you suggest people uh, or, or, or we lab bank? How do you balance uh, speed and uh, convenience with security? I think a beauty of virtual bank is we are a bank. It's just we don't have the uh, bricks and mortar branches, but we are uh, expect to and we must comply with all the security standards, just like everyone in our, um, uh, every bank in Hong Kong. So believe me or not, almost every, almost every month we have been inspected and checked and audited by the regulator and external auditors. So we, we, we have to go through all those to ensure our, our security standards are as robust and sometimes above and beyond uh, what the regulations say. So, so in terms of um, uh, our security, we are as safe as all banks. But we can still provide you with the process in such an efficient way. And uh, I think most of the uh, challenges for bank is not so much about the internal system, it's about education of the customer. Yeah, so, so um, I still remember, uh, as, you, as you know, 60% uh, of our crime in the past uh, years um, Sixty percent of which are committed online. They are cyber fraud, and and we are using talking about over sixty billions of uh, of them. And, and and the regulators are coming to all the virtual banks and banks and and asking for solutions. We're talking about lawman scam. We are talking about employment scam. So, so the only thing we, we can help the customer from falling into those traps is by education. Yes. So, so that is the way we, we, we mitigate the risk is by educate by more promoting and, and doing more educations and of course and by and we have to ensure our internal system will help us. Thank you, Millie. So I don't want to hog the time. Anyone have any questions? Maybe I have to it be uh, further about my transaction. If the client living in mainland China, uh -huh. so is it uh, also open account just through your, your your website? Then another question is uh, like foreign currency control. Then if open account, is it can easily transfer money from mainland China to like offshore bank? Yeah, how's the chance? Thank you. Um, how to say? Uh, as I mentioned, we start small. We have not yet uh, expand our market to, to mainland China yet. <laughs> that is a, that is a, a, there is a plan for us to expand our business in GBA. Uh, uh, 
but I can still answer questions if you, in terms of um, if you're talking about security or not, um, and, uh, and your your first question is if I if I understand correctly is uh, how do we ensure the security of our transaction if the transaction originated from the from the mainland China is that the first question. So the same. In fact, the apps are just like all the internet banking framework we, we, we have in Hong Kong. Uh, we accommodate not, not only transactions originate from Hong Kong, but also originate from anywhere in the world. So they are still subject to all the, all the security uh, measures and control and governance that we have set out for, for, for all the other uh, banking transactions. So, 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 I hope we can we, we, we can answer your questions. In terms of AML, uh, we have EKYC to ensure that the, the, the IP uh, documents, the identity verifications can be done robustly and online. For for foreign uh, foreign currency control issues, just like um, uh, what the traditional bank manager said, we will have to um, usually, the easier ways to do is we we, we only receive or, or accommodate transfer from the same main account the clients have from other banks in Hong Kong. Mm. So 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 that is uh, one of the easier way. Or or if it is an SME account with the other banks, uh, we don't we don't have SME. Clone yet. Uh, we, we will need to read out the individuals. Uh, but for other banks, usually they will have to look at uh, the papers uh, from, from mainland uh, to ensure they are coming from the legitimate source. So, so that, that, is, uh, that is the, I, I don't see there is a uh, particular challenges uh, for us to do uh, business uh, with mainland China um, customers. Uh, it's just we have to adjust a bit and also deploy yeah, some technologies to ensure the transactions are, are legitimate and, and secure. Uh, but I don't really see a particular issue with it. It's just the same as we do transaction with customer in United States, in Germany, in France. It's the same. I don't see there a particular uh, issue with it. Thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mimi. Thank you, Alan. Um, so we have this space until 3 p.m. And uh, yes, please feel free to um, enjoy the drinks over there. And there's some sandwich at the back. Yeah, so thank you, Mimi and Alan, for thank coming you. today. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, so thank you so much.